And they sung a new song saying thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals, to open the seals thereof. For thou was slain and hath redeemed, hath redeemed us to God by thy blood, by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue, by thy blood, by thy blood and people and nations. And hath made us unto our God, has made us kings and priests. And we shall reign on the earth, and on the earth shall reign. For thou wast slain, and hath redeemed, hath redeemed us to God, O oh, by thy blood. By thy blood out of every kindred and tongue, by thy blood, by thy blood and people and nations. Thank you for being here this morning. I want you all to sit down and we're going to study together the book of Revelation. And those that are watching on the internet, if you have any questions or you folks out there have any questions, when we're finished today, you can ask questions or send us in our email address and we'll answer the questions for you. You say, Brother Martin, why do you want to study the book of Revelation? Why should we study it? One of the reasons I want to study it is because of things that are happening right now. Uh, we were teaching this book, uh, and we got to the seven churches in, the, in Asia there, uh, Asia Minor. That is really in Turkey where these seven churches are located. And the next day, uh, the earthquake hit in Turkey and just flattened them out and put rocks all over everything. It's a mess over there, and people were dying. And my mother-in-law came to me and asked me, she says, Did you read that verse of Scripture over in Revelation chapter 11? This is what she says in 11, uh, she said, read this verse of scripture over there. She said, I want to show you something. She says, is this talking about the time right now? And it's first verse 13. And this is what it says. Uh, that is Revelation chapter 11 and verse 13. It says this, and the same hour was a great earthquake and a tenth part of the city fell and the earthquake and then the earthquake was slain of men, 7,000 and the remnant were frightened and gave, uh, and gave glory to God of heaven. So she asked me, she says, is that during the time of the tribulation? Or what time is that? Is that now? I said, no, ma'am. That has nothing to do with us right now. Now, it is what we call earth. Uh, the earth is groaning to be delivered, as it says in Revel uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 22. This earth, the creation of God, is groaning to be delivered like a woman having birth. That's what it says, uh, in travail and pain, as a woman gives birth. And so why is that? Because of the corruption? Yes, part of the corruption. But the other reason I want to study the, book, uh, the Word of God is to, with you folks here, the book of Revelation, is because the day of the Lord will come. That's what he says in our text that we're going to read to you in just a moment. Uh, yesterday morning or the other morning, I think it was two days ago, I was at work here with the sh in the uh, studio with the brothers, and I asked them this question. I said, do you believe in global warming? You know, the earth is getting hotter. And some of them says, yes, Brother Martin, and that had three different kind of answers because we're all mixed up and trying to figure out what's going on and what time are we in before the Lord's coming. And I want you to know this, and I want to know this, and God wants us to know. He said, he that hath the ears, let him hear. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of God saith unto the churches. That's in chapter 7, I mean chapter 2 of Revelation, verse 7. And he says that to each church. He said, I know thy works. And so Jesus is going to speak to these seven churches, and we're going to study that in just a moment. But the day of the Lord will come, as it says in, in, in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10, and will come as a thief in the night. You say, well, is that coming now? Is that happening right now? And the heavens shall pass away in the great noise, and the elements shall be melted 
shall melt with fervent heat the earth also and the works uh, that are therein. They shall be burned up. That's what God said. It's going to burn up this whole thing. Heaven and earth will pass away. But God said, my word will never pass away. And that's why it's so important that we study the word of God together and know where we're at. And if you'll study this little chart with me, we have a chart back here. And this part here is where uh, it starts off and says that Jesus is resurrection here. You remember, he was crucified, buried for three days and three nights. He rose again. And the Bible tells us right here that the angels, after when he, this ascension right here is when he rose. <clears throat> Excuse me. You remember in Acts chapter 1, the disciples were standing around and he was uh, giving them instructions about uh, waiting on the Holy Spirit to come upon them. And they, as they were watching them in verse 11, this is what they said. And which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, uh, which is taken up from you in he into heaven, shall come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. So he's going and he's coming back. Amen. And now before he comes back, there's some things that are going to be happening. I mean, that's what he said. He said, no man knows the day or the hour, and I would be a fool or any other man who tries to speak a certain day that the Lord's coming. There was a guy, I remember in 1988, uh, after I met the Lord, and um, I met the Lord in 73, but this was in 88, I remember. I was getting ready to go to Romania. And there was a man said, on, the, on this date, in 1988, the Lord's coming. And I remember people were selling their lands and, and giving him the money or somebody the money and doing different things, all dressed in white, getting ready for the Lord to come. All of them were uh, selling their businesses and selling their homes and because they didn't need him anymore. He said, the Lord's coming. I don't know when he's coming, but he does tell us, look, you can know the season, know the times, know the signs. And God has shown us so gracious to show us these signs that are going on. But the Bible says in this part that the Lord, he rose from the grave. And look at here. He ascended after 40 days. He showed himself with many infallible proofs, the Bible says there in Acts chapter 1. And showed himself to the disciples and many. And then the Bible says he ascended up on that verse of Scripture. But this is the church age. In Revelation chapter 1, for the first three chapters, that's the church age. That's when the Jesus Christ is speaking to the church. And I want you to show you something here. This is why I know it's God's will for me and you to study the Word of God. And I'll tell you why. Not only did he tell us, let them that have ears hear what the Lord saith unto the churches, but he says through this that he wants to show us his love. He wants to show us what's going to happen. And he wants you not to be stupid or ignorant of what he's doing. Me either. And so many times when somebody asks us something like uh, this sister asked me the other day when he, the Lord was coming, was this earthquake in Turkey? Was that part of that revelation there in the book of Revelation? I said, no, that is going to happen after the church is called up because after the church age, here's where we're at right here. Then comes the rapture of the church. He said, you believe in the rapture? Are you a premillennialist? I'm a Bible believer, amen. And I believe the Bible teaches that, not only in the book of Revelation, but in 1 Thessalonians, he tells us, he tells us again in other places, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. So many times the Lord tells us that he's coming. He said, be ready, get ready. And here's the signs. When you see these things start happening, get ready, okay? So I'm going to start reading it to you out of the book of Revelation. We're going to stay together and starting in chapter 1 and verse 1. Now notice what it says. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Let's just take those two verses of Scripture to start off with. Right? This is a revelation. The word revelation means apocalypse. That's, what it's, that's how you say it in Romanian. They don't have a, a book in the Bible called Revelation. 
they have a book called Apocalypse, and that Apocalypse is the called the word it means in Greek. It means a revealing, displaying, and that's what Jesus wants to show Himself to us, and the things that are going to happen that we may get ourselves ready. Amen. Don't you want to be ready? You know, I don't want to be ignorant of the Word of God. I study. And I, I try to remember, I memorize, even this whole chapter, I memorized it. But I don't want to just memorize I want to know what he's speaking about. And 90% of the book of Revelation is found in the Old Testament, whether it's references or quotations, but it's found in the Old Testament. So if you know the Old Testament, you don't have any problem with the language uh, in the New Testament, I know there's some things that, that uh, people get scared off of. You know, they say, well, that's a f scary book. You know, how can you know it? Listen, it was as scary in the days of Noah. Here was a preacher called Noah. And God says, as it was in the days of Noah. You can read that in Matthew chapter 24. And so many times people have tried to preach that. And I tried to even study it. And I never could understand it until... I understood the book, started understanding the book of Revelation and the dispensations that we're in. We're in this time right now called Revelation chapter 1, from chapter 1 to 3. And we're right here getting ready to leave out of here. And the Lord wants us to be ready. So he tells us in his word that this is the revelation of Jesus Christ. This is not John's revelations. This is not an angel's revelations. He said the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God the Father gave to him, gave unto him, look at in verse 1, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Now this word shortly come to pass, you said, Brother Martin, this was given to us how many years ago? 1900 years ago? And John was 95 on the Isle of Patmos at this time? Yes. It was given to us. You say, well, I thought it said surely come to pass. This word, and I'm not going to use a lot of Greek words. I don't have time to, to try to impress you with Greek words. And I hope you, I don't impress you. I hope the Lord Jesus Christ it gets you excited about his coming. Amen. The Bible tells us this word meant in the Greek, it means in taki. That word means like you, we, we get the word uh how do you say a tachometer, a uh, tachometer in your car? Some people that have these high performance motors or newer cars, sometimes they have what they call the, the tachometer, tachometer. It's called RPM, revolution per minute. That means how fast that thing is turning. And this word means that when this thing starts happening, when the church is called up, it's going to happen fast. Amen. There's going to be seven years that we'll study together. Glory to God. And I hope you'll love to study the God, words of God because here's what the good word of God says. He said, study to show thyself approved unto God. This is another reason we need to teach and study together the book of Revelation. Jesus asked Peter one time, you remember when Peter denied him? Uh, Peter, after that, Peter met him out there on the, when he was out there fishing and, and the Lord was on the shore and, <clears throat> excuse me, Peter came to shore and, and he says, Peter, he says, uh, and Peter went to get the fish. He didn't want to be around in the presence of the Lord at that time. And Jesus looked at him and says, Peter, do you love me? Lovest thou me more than these? Do you love me, Peter? Peter said, Lord, you know I love you. What did the Lord tell him to do? He said, feed my sheep. You say, then he told that Peter again. He asked him three times. He said, Peter, do you love me? He says, Lord, you know all things. You know I love you. He said, feed my sheep, feed my lambs. And then he said, feed my sheep. It's God's will that we help others around us learn the word of God and understand our Lord and not be ignorant because he says in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You know, the Lord loves you, and he loves me, and he wants us to know his will. He wants us to know his ways. He wants us to know his word. This word will keep you. This word will protect you. This word will comfort you. This word will counsel you. This word will be a blessing if you'll put it in your heart and your mind and meditate upon it and live the things that he said. Because look what he says in verse 2. Who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is God the Father. Speaking to God the Son, and God the Son gives it to an angel, to John, and he says, now write it down. Write what you're seeing. Everything you see, write it down. 
And so some people get kind of upset because they can't understand. You know, they said, how do you understand his face is as the sun shineth in his strength? We'll get to that in a minute. But if, how, how else could he say it? Uh, how would he tell you and explain to you in terms uh, 1900 years ago? They didn't even believe in electricity back then, did they? I don't think so. Back in Martin Luther's time and back in the great, in the, uh, uh, Reformation during Martin Luther in that time, in that 15 years, they didn't understand those things. But we do now. How could you understand every eye shall see him? Every eye shall be looking on the three on the two witnesses that die for three days and three nights and get up. How would they do that? How can everybody see? Let me tell you something. We're at a place right now in technology that you can see something in a, another th- part of the earth, and everybody can see it at the same time through satellites, and through internet, and all this other stuff they have, where you can see things. We can see it, amen? They didn't know that back then. So they give us terms that were of Old Testament terms, because like I told you, 90% of the Old Testament, is that's what takes up the New Test, uh, the book of Revelation. It's 90% of prophecy and uh, quotations from the old, the old Testament. There's 300 and uh, 404 verses in the, New, in the book of Revelation. 90% of that are from the Old Testament. That's why if you learn the Old Testament, when he tells us something, go back and look at it. Don't be ignorant of it. What did it mean back then when Daniel was speaking it and different ones were speaking? Jeremiah was speaking it and different ones were speaking the Word of God. That's why he wants us to know it. Then he tells us that all Scripture he is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. So let's read just a little bit more, then we'll close for today, okay? So he says, Who bear record of the Word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth the, and hear the words of this prophecy. So this is a prophecy. This is not a uh, book that they call uh, allegoric or allegorical. It's not that at all. Because that's like John, you remember, uh, who is his name? John Bungie, who wrote that great uh, classic piece called Pilgrim's Progress. He was in a vision and he seen things and he heard things. This is not that. This is a prophecy of things that are going to happen. It's going to happen in the, in the future. And he's, he's climaxing all the, what all the other prophecies have said down through the years looking for this time. Everybody has been looking for the time of the Lord when he's coming. And then he says here, he says, Blessed are they that hear it, uh, they that read the words of the prophecy, hear it, and those that keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. And then we start with John with the seven churches. So John was the writer, John the beloved, he was the apostle, and he wrote the uh, gospel of John, and he wrote the three epistles, and now he's writing the book of Revelation when he's 95 years old, somewhere around 90 some years old, and he's on an isle called Patmos. That's where he read it at. So we're going to study this together, and, and tomorrow, I hope we'll start studying again, starting in verses 4, about these seven churches and what's going on. Amen. God bless you and thank you for watching us. Get in touch with us. Uh, This is called Let the Bible Speak on the Internet. In this church, you know this is our Bible study. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Amen. I never thought that true love could be knowing Lord Jesus Christ personally.